What's up guys? I uh, just wanted to start off uh, today's video with a question. Uh, the question is, should churches regulate or police holiness? Uh, I'm driving so I can't put my, my little quotation fingers up, but think about that in all quotes, <laughs> right? All quotes, not all caps, no, in quotations. Um, you know, the word holiness. Um, there are there's there are a lot of places out there, churches and, and stuff that um, that put a huge emphasis on the outward appearance of people, the outward adorning. Um, and a lot of times, not all the time, but sometimes they, they will call this holiness or holiness uh, standards or uh, you know, these are holiness churches. Well, uh, my first uh, kind of point here is that obviously nothing that we do makes us holy. Um, that is completely incorrect. Totally wrong, not scriptural. If, if a church teaches that, um, well, they need to stop because honestly that's false doctrine. Uh, holiness is something d done, completed, only by God, only by God. When God designates something as separate unto himself. In the Old Testament, you have holy furniture, uh, robes that were holy. There was a, there was certain uh, mixtures of the apothecary, you know, ointments and stuff fragrances that were holy and when God said this is mine this is holy uh, if you mix that for any other purpose you were in deep doo-doo and, and that's the uh, technical Hebrew term deep doo-doo so we have to be careful when we throw around the word holiness only God makes us holy it is solely an act of Almighty God by his grace by his mercy uh, through Jesus Christ that we are made holy. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, I think it's 9 through 11, talks about all these different sins that the apostle um, lists. And people in the Corinthian church had done. And it's just all these you know, things that we would know. These are sinful sins sinful activities, sinful lifestyles. And then he says, uh, I think it's verse 11, he says, and such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified. Now the word sanctified there, you can go study it yourself, go look at it. Um, that means set apart. How is it done? First Corinthians lets us know. It is by the blood of Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of our God. You see, holiness is only through the act of God. I cannot iterate that enough. I will reiterate it yet again. Holiness is solely an act of God. Now, on to the next point, and that is that we can become unholy through things that we do. We can contaminate God's holiness, if you want to put it that way. How is this? Well, in the Old Testament, this was possible. In the Old Testament, you find that the Bible teaches that things that were holy can become unholy because of contact with things that are unholy. You can go to the book of Haggai and, and read that. But um, I think it's chapter two that, that talks about this. Righteousness is more than just a one-time act that Jesus did you know, for us on the cross. And we just say, oh God, I love you. And we, you know, we're made righteous and then we're, we're done. The Bible over and over and over throughout the epistles talks about right conduct, right actions, things we are supposed to do in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, things of this nature that keep us righteous. God will not have unrighteousness before him. And so God can designate us as holy 
in an instant, in a moment, he can make us from unholy to holy, but then it is incumbent upon us to maintain that by walking in his righteousness, obeying his word, his commandments, his precepts. Now, on to the next point. Does that include outward adorning, outward uh, clothing, uh, where we go, uh, how we talk? Does it include things so trivial? Well, yes, the thing is, in scripture, the Bible does teach that the way we talk, I mean, the Bible talks against uh, coarse joking, against having uh, a certain type of mouth, right, potty mouth. It does talk about that. It does talk about our attitude. It talks about our outward adorning in two different places, First Peter, First Timothy. It does speak of these things. And what does it link it to? Often it links it to our attitude that the outward adorning is sometimes a clue of what's going on inside. Not always, but sometimes it is. And so it warns us against these things. One other uh, obvious thing is one of the most deadly sins, perhaps, perhaps the most deadly sin, is pride. Pride got Lucifer, didn't it? Pride got Adam and Eve, didn't it? But how do you see that? can't on the inside a lot of times, right? Yeah, you, you, how do you? But guess what? When people are proud, there are things externally that give you clues to that. And so the Bible warns not just against the sin itself, but also against things that can lead to it and wants us to be able to have that safety zone of, hey, let's not just, just look for the sin itself, but let's look for some of these areas where we can be righteous in our lives, where we can have conduct and attitudes that keep us even further away from that sin. And so what do we call this? The Bible talks about modesty, modest apparel. These are not one and the same. Modesty and holiness are not one and the same. And that's where a lot of these places will, will mess up. They will link the outside with the inside as though it's one and the same. And I will, in my next point, I will show why that's extremely dangerous uh, and fallacious. However, let's deal with this first. That does not mean, you know, do whatever you want, dress however you want. I mean, most people would say that, you know, if we had, hey, next Sunday, guys, it's uh, everybody come in your underwear Sunday. Uh, I think most places, maybe not all, would think, yeah, there's something wrong with this. Why? Because we all recognize at some point, you get down to the point where you shouldn't be showing all that, right? And so, it is in the scripture. Just our thought process is not how we gauge that. But, guess what? The scripture says that we are to dress modestly. And we should seek after God to find out what that means, and we should obey it. However... Why do I make such a big point about, well, yeah, we need to have the modesty and uh, and it's not holiness, but we should still do it. Isn't that just parsing words? Isn't that just, you know, semantics? No, and here's why. Linking it with holiness does this. Yes, it does. I know what I'm talking about from experience, um, knowing lots of people in churches like this. I mean, you can just go on YouTube and listen to people like this and you can see it's the case. What it does is it shifts holiness churches or clothesline preachers, clothesline preaching, and you're constantly you know, harping on the outward, the outward, the outward. Here's what it does. It creates people that are focused on the outward and not really that focused on the inward. People don't come to church with a, you know, there's a checklist right there of people you know, coming in the door. Hey, have you prayed this week? Hey, how's your prayer life going? Hey, when's the last time you, you know, for really cried and repented before God in your in your prayer closet? Hey, are you reading reading the word for yourself? Are you in the word? Hey, are you doing ministry out there? Are you just coming and sitting and soaking? Or are you are you becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ? 
No, they don't ask those questions. They just look at you, size you up, and make sure you're lining up to the 30 or 40 or 50 or 80 or 500 different things that are on the list that you're supposed to do that everybody can see. But, oh, you, oh, you went to that place? You must be a ranked sinner. But they don't ask if, have you even prayed in the last 20 days, right? <laughs> and so many times I can promise you, people are up preaching, people are up singing, people are out ministering, people are doing all kinds of things. They have no prayer life. But boy, oh boy, they wouldn't put such and such on. That is anti-Bible. Jesus said, first, clean the inside of the cup that the outside should be clean also. Now, if you look at the context, he's not talking about clothing and holiness preaching and people that use that are just using it out of context. He's talking about things in your body, you know, things like that. He's not, you, you don't see that he's making a point there about your dress. Now, people can use it that way, but it's used out of context. However, the point is the same. He says... The inside is the most imperative. And what happens is people just focus on the outside only or primarily. They don't really check and push for true discipleship. They don't push for true relationship with God. And so you end up with a bunch of shallow Christians 10 years in, 20 years in, 30 years in, 40 years in, they don't know how to pray themselves out of a paper bag. They don't have the kind of faith and trust in God to accomplish anything, barely even hold on to be saved, hopefully. Of course, you don't know that till they're dead, right? <laughs> then it's too late. What we need to do is we need to have a proper understanding. God and God alone makes us holy. These Places that will focus and so overemphasize the outward need to rebalance. Not that they should say, oh, we don't care about the outward at all, you know? No, the Bible teaches it. We should not avoid, you know, 1 Timothy. We shouldn't avoid 1 Peter where they speak of these things. But what we should do is we should have them in context. We should look at the balancing of these things and say, wait a minute, how much emphasis is really on this? Where's the real emphasis? Ah, let's put the emphasis there. Walking in the spirit, being spirit-led. Now, today, hopefully this will awaken some people. Oh, maybe awaken, oh gee golly, wouldn't that be awesome if it awakened a pastor? Awakened an elder somewhere to say, wow, I have been too focused on the outward and not creating disciples, but creating little automatons that come and do exactly what I say, as I can see it anyway, and then go home and do whatever they jolly well want to in the secret of their homes and don't even have a relationship with God. Instead, I will start focusing on the inside and, yes, teach the other stuff as well. That is the hope, that people will awaken, that people will become disciples, because what this does is it completely and totally, absolutely crushes the working of the Spirit, the making of disciples, because everybody's just focused on a list of rules to follow, and I mean, we might as well just be going to boot camp or something where there's a lot of rules and we just train ourselves and become soldiers for Jesus, which is crazy. That's not what God wants. So, to recap, Let's finalize this thing here with a little summary, okay? Number one, holiness is something God does alone. God makes us holy. It is separation unto him. It is through the power of the gospel. What do we see, 1 Corinthians 6, 11? What do we see there? Blood of Jesus Christ, where is that applied? In baptism. The spirit of our God, where is that applied? In filling of the spirit. It is through the gospel that God purchased us. Praise God. But that is where we are sanctified, made holy. Do we need to do anything after that? Yes, the Bible teaches us that we are supposed to live righteously. In Titus chapter 2, uh, Paul actually tells Timothy, it's the grace of God that teaches us we are to live soberly, righteously in this present world. 
And so we are to. Who is to? We are to live righteously. And part of righteousness is obeying the scriptures that talk about modesty and apparel and dress and these types of things. We should. We should search the scriptures and and we should learn what those are. Uh, If you have questions on that, post them. Feel free to post those. Uh, Email us. Get in touch with us. We'd be happy to go. That's a whole different Bible study there. We'd love to talk about that. But uh, the final point here is we cannot be harping on this all the time. We can't be outward focused. If we're outward focused, we're not focused on the thing that's the most important per Jesus' words, which is the inward, which is things like a prayer life, washing those inner sins that are the most dangerous, pride and bitterness and unrepentant attitudes and things of that nature that you can't see. That's the most deadly sins. And we need to focus on that. We need to focus on prayer, relationship with God, uh, discipleship, and put a little bit of focus and emphasis on the other stuff. Let's get that rebalanced. Let's flip that around. Let's become what God wants us to be. So the, the answer to the question, should churches police holiness? The answer is get off of it. If you're in a church like that, By golly, pray to God and find a way out because you will be crushed and destroyed forever. You know what? They should teach righteousness, live righteous internally first, be prayerful, be in relationship with God, do what God wants you to do, obey God, live according to Him, His principles, live close to Him, have a prayer life. Did I mention prayer? Get in relationship with God. Did I mention the Bible? Read it, study it. Come on, people. That's what they should do. Should they chase people around and make sure that everybody's dressing like they think? Absolutely not. Get off of it, dude. Should people run around with clothesline preaching and police their people? No. You know what? Pray, pray, pray. Get with God and become what he wants you to be. It's the only place to live. Love you guys. Be blessed and have an awesome day.